Hey everyone. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. It's Rita from It's Rita to the Rescue here for Friday's Cricket Chat. Um, Friday is usually 3D Friday, so um, I am going to be doing a 3D project, even though we kind of we kind of stretched that 3D last week and the week before with all these 3D projects, but we're going to also be focusing on freebie. So it's a freebie 3D, <laughs> a 3D freebie and plus a sign. Um, so good morning, good morning to everyone and uh, welcome if you're new today. Hi, Susan. Hello, Diane. Hi, everyone. Uh, let's see, Kathy, hi, April, hi, April's on her way to work, right, but she's going to sneak in the lesson, hi, Renee, and Emmy, so welcome, um, so I'm going to sort of present to you another freebie place that I, that I really like, um, I have no affiliation with these sites, just so that you know, it's not like, um, I, get paid or anything well I, I can't say that because dreaming tree I do have an affiliate with dreaming tree but that's it and um and it doesn't work anyway for a free <laughs> for a free SVG but um but these are just places that I like now there are tons of SVGs for free on the internet in general but I like to do paper crafts so I am looking for paper crafting SVGs that I like the most and that includes this this one craft with Sarah if you are um, if you missed any of this week's videos make sure you go over to YouTube and check them out we did dreaming tree we did uh, Lori Whitlock we did birds cards um, and then what did we do yesterday I forget what we did yesterday uh, oh, yes, 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 Simply Crafty SVGs. So we're rounding out the week with this Craft with Sarah. Is that all of the SVGs out there? No, no, not by a long shot. But these are great ones that have super ideas for paper crafters. Um, and I just thought it would be nice to highlight them. Next week on Cricut Chat, we're going to be doing... Um, we're going to be doing infusible ink on soft surfaces. We're going to do some back to school shirts and um, and some other things. End of the summer, uh, we've got pillowcases to do. We've got cosmetic cases or pencil cases, and we will do a little bit of sublimation. We'll make a sublimated T-shirt um, and and all that lovely stuff. So I hope you can join us next week. Tomorrow is, hi Kelly, tomorrow is a date night, but it's our monthly Zoom call. Um, and I will set that up with Lynn. Um, and so uh, we'll have our monthly Zoom call at seven o'clock. And uh, let's see, what else? That's just going to be kind of a chatty time. Anybody can join that. Um, I will post a link both in YouTube and in uh, Facebook. And anybody can come on and really just kind of to chat with our group. I'll try to at least videotape the first hour or so and, um, and then repost it if you miss it. Okay, so or if you're shy about going on camera, then you could eat, you could just come in and comment on that live. So it's going to be kind of, it's a live Zoom that's um, recorded on my phone and then rebroadcast of the recording if that makes sense it's a little bit different than our usual thing and there won't be a project associated with that call that's just what we do so let's get started oh I wanted to mention one thing before I get started um I wanted to thank all of my lovely followers we hit a really cool number uh just yesterday we have 15 
thousand followers. Fifteen thousand. I never thought. And remember when we were we hit one hundred and we thought that was fabulous. So fifteen thousand followers on YouTube is pretty amazing. And it's so close to my year end goal of twenty thousand people. And remember, uh to make the twenty thousand people we do also have giveaways. I will be launching a giveaway um, for, we decided, I think, on, you, we decided yesterday that we deci- that we were going to give away at least one more Cricut Joy with a bundle, a Cricut Joy, because some people still want to win those. And um, so our original plan was to do the Cricut Joy giveaway f- until, um, through September. So, so I think what we'll do is we'll do Cricket Joy for this month, and then we'll do another one for next month, and then the following month we'll start with the mug presses, and we'll give away some mug presses, and hopefully by then um, the mug mugs for the mug presses will be in stock. They've had a difficult time putting, uh, keeping the mugs in stock because the mug presses are pretty awesome. I will tell you that. Um, okay, so yes, yay for us. It's really a team goal that we made, really, honest and true, because um, couldn't do it without you guys uh, cheering me on every day. It really does help me quite a lot. And um, I thank you, thank you, and I really appreciate the follows. And um, I try to respond to your messages all the time, and I just love them. Just love being with you guys every day. So, um Let's see. Let's go back to our topic, which is freebies. And today we're going to be doing um, a place that I found. It's not super well known, but it's called Craft with Sarah. She's another uh, British or UK um, designer. So she has that lovely accent and she does do a lot of videos um, on there as well. She has her own SVG shop and also she has a series of videos that she offers to show you how to do uh, layers. It is found at craftwithsarah.com and you see it's a very nicely designed website. I'm going to have to get in touch with her because I need to redo my website soon. Uh, Actually, it's way overdue that needs to be done. So it's Craft with Sarah. And you'll see she has a course, which is that um, she offers these videos. It's like a course on layered and it costs like just under 50 bucks. Um, I haven't taken it, but it looked pretty good. Um, And then she has an SVG shop where if you are a dog or cat person like me, um, you can see your dogs. Let me show you the dogs. Look at all these dog breeds, including... Uh, there's a corgi in there with and without the tail somewhere. Uh, There is it there? I think it might be here. Is that the, no, that's not the corgi. That looks like a, what is that? A Gordon Setter. I don't know all of these breeds because I'm so corgi focused, but there is indeed a corgi one in here because I looked and I thought, oh yeah, maybe I put it in my bag even. Yep, there it is. Corgi SVG with and without a tail. So there's like my Benji with the little nubby tail. And then these are like uh, Lola. And you can add the uh, the colored patches because not all corgis are um, red and white. Some of them are tri, as is, as is Lola. Anyway, getting back to the free stuff. So she has also here a bunch of free things right here, free SVGs. And today we're going to be doing um, two of the projects. One is uh, a Halloween sign. It's oversized and I love this technique. I played with it yesterday. I did add a few things that I I liked, and that includes I added some glitter on the letters and also on the green parts. And actually, I used something called um, craft board, 
I don't know if we talked about craft board ever, but craft board is kind of a thicker card stock. And so I wanted for my sign to not be floppy because it is rather big. And so I decided to use craft board on the back. And so um, that is that worked out great. And I want to show you that. OK, um, so we're going to do that. And then we're going to also do real quick. We're going to do um, these cubes, these countdown cubes that is for Halloween. However, um, I also did ones for Christmas and then I started playing on my own and I wanted to do an updated one. So I think I'll probably do that later um, where you can make your own basically countdown to anything. I remember when it was turning the millennial, right? It was turning to the year 2000 and there were all kinds of little countdowns, countdown times and uh calendars till New Year's Eve. But then also, you know, when people are going to get married or they have a big event like, I don't know, uh, graduation from college or something like that, oftentimes a little project that is a countdown to graduation or something like that would be kind of a fun little memento to give somebody or maybe even a uh, birth or something. I don't know. I was just thinking that we could make this anything we want countdown. So we will do the days until Halloween, but we'll also talk a tiny bit about how to, um, how to make it on your own. So with all, as with all SVGs, you do need to download them onto your computer before you can then upload them and bring them into design space. Okay. Now with Sarah's designs, I believe you need to create an account. Um, and then once you create the account, you can download anything. Somebody's somebody's texting me. I apologize for the beeping, the bing dinging. Um, so you, once you have logged in, you can download anything. And what I like about her files is in addition to the download, you'll go to a tutorial. And I think almost all of them, those tutorials include a video lesson. Um, and so there's where you, so this is not a video lesson. Oh, here we go. This is sort of a general video lesson, but this is also a, um, sort of a step-by-step -step guide on how to put together the, um, the files. Some of the ones that are a little more advanced, she does a full video on that. So go ahead and set up an account with her and then go and download all of the free things that you want. There's a Christmas one that I really love um, that I'll do later on as we get closer to Christmas. Um, and so there's a lot, very generous uh, person. There's an Easter. Here's the Christmas one that I really like. So I think I'll be doing that in a future video. Um, and it's very large. It's like 18 inches. And you'd be surprised how this cut on a regular, um, you don't need an extra long cut. So these are all SVGs that are free. And there's also stuff for vinyl if you are interested in vinyl. We're mostly focused on paper and that's what we, um, that's what we sort of do. Okay. So when I have downloaded those files, what I'm going to do is start with a clean slate here and I'm going to go to upload, okay? We're gonna to go to upload and you can see in my little library, which is just the recent ones, I think there's like 10, three, six, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So the first 12, the 12 most recent uploads that I've done will appear here. The thing about Sarah's designs is that they are all in one. Um, and so uh, there, so you can see that this one here, this is actually the cube, the Halloween cube. This one's the Christmas cube. And then these are the larger than signs. And then these are some nice uh, free designs that she offers up to people right here uh, for 
cards, okay? So you're just going to upload the image after you downloaded it to your computer, okay? Um, and so you do that by hitting that upload button and then you go to browse, find your downloads file and they are usually aptly named like Christmas Countdown with Craft with Sarah right here. You're going to click on that and you'll see hers are very simple. They just come in. So this one is all one piece and you also get a JPEG to sort of see what you're making and a terms of use text. Okay. So we're going to open that and that basically comes in as an SVG. We're going to be looking for the SVGs when we're doing um, an upload because they come in easier. If you have a choice between SVG and PNG or JPG, always choose the SVG, okay? Um, so let's have a look at this one. We'll look at the Halloween one when it comes in to our design space, okay? So this is kind of interesting. So she has this grouped like this, and it's a very long grouping. Now you could do one of two things. She suggests that you you um, resize these all at once and not to take away this grouping. But personally, I'm not into that. I like to have the entire thing um, ungrouped so that I can have all the pieces. So here's what I do. I'm gonna ungroup and I'm gonna move these pieces up because I don't like to scroll. <laughs> and so I'm moving these pieces up here so I don't have to make my screen too small and I don't have to scroll around to see all the pieces. So the, um, the countdowns consist of two of these blocks, right? and um, each block has numbers on them. You might remember this for our perpetual calendar, okay? And then, um, then there is the stand, which is right here. This is the stand. The stand? Does that make sense? Yeah, the base. The base. Okay, the base is a better word. Okay, and um, it consists of actually three pieces. So what we want to do first and foremost is once we've ungrouped it, we want to grab them all and hit align center. Whoops. Align center. That's going to bring them all together because we're going to resize these. This is these are not sized the correct way. So um, I want to resize them so that they are a bigger um, block. So we're going to resize this, all of these, to 10 inches wide. So go up here once you have that aligned and we're going to change the width to 10. Um, and then we can go ahead and make any adjustments to, but once we do that, see how these all change in size? The other thing that we have to do, as we do with all of our imported SVGs, is we have to attach the um, score lines. However, in Sarah's files, the score lines are not the dashed score lines that we're used to. They're actually solid cut lines. So let's look at these here. I'm going to just look at this one because it's pretty simple. And so you see that this has actually got a cut line straight through. So if you were to actually cut this without attaching or without fixing this, you would end up with two pieces of cardstock. So what you're going to do is look for the layer that is that has that. So over here is this is the layer. See how it's highlighted? And there are two parts to this layer or two parts to this image. One, it, it almost looks like it's not there and it says basic cut, but actually those are the score lines. And then you have the actual part itself that so that square is there. So we're going to select just the one that looks almost like a shadow, at least to me it looks that way. Um, and we're going to select that and then we're going to come up here to operation use the pull down menu and switch it to score. Okay. 
See how it changed it to that dashed line? It's kind of a thicker score, by the way. And this will use your scoring wheel or your scoring stylus. Now, um, in the event that you want to do one of Sarah's files that has scoring on it and you have a joy, what you would probably do is just take away or change the scoring to pencil or not pencil, but a, like a pen. Um, and then once you see the the line where it's scored, you're going to um, take, once you get it cut out, then you can come back and just score those lines by hand. That's how you would do it for joy. Anyway, um, once you get these um, score lines established everywhere, you're going to then attach them because we, we need for them to be attached. So um, that is also down here on the right at the bottom. It's a paper clip. So you select this whole thing, even though they look attached. See, it looks attached, but it's really not. So you have to group this together and attach. Now, when you go to cut it, it will be attached to the score. The score line will be attached to that piece of paper. Okay. The other things that you have to do um, are these blocks and the actual base. So let's do one of the blocks so that you can see what I'm talking about. So here on the blocks, you'll see it, it's actually two colors. You have the letter, I'm sorry, the number, and you have the, um, the actual block. And then you see all of these little lines here. So what we want to do with these is ungroup them and then carefully take the numbers off. Okay, we want to do this because when we go to change our um, score line to a, I'm sorry, our cut line to a score line, we don't um, get rid of these numbers. Okay, so now we're just going to focus on this piece right here. And you see here, it, there are the cut lines. I'm just going to go back. If, by the way, if that ever happens to you, just use the back button right here. It's like a little arrow going back, okay? Um, and then we're going to select this. Let's do this. Select this. And you'll notice here on the right-hand side, there are the two layers. There's our cut that we need to make score, and there's our actual um, paper cut, right? The outline of it anyway and so what we're going to do is select the lines and we're going to over here go to operation and score and then come on don't get in my way then select these again and attach okay you're going to do that with all three of these uh, pieces same with this, same with this, and then you're going to cut everything out. This is a fairly straight cut. You will use your um, scoring wheel uh, or your scoring stylus to do this, and um, it's, it goes together really easily. I'm going to show you how it goes together, but before I do that, I want to um, show you the sign because this is kind of an interesting sign. So I uploaded this SVG and I pulled it in. There's actually nothing you have to do to this sign before you cut it. It's really cool. And you might say, Rita, that doesn't make any sense because it is 22 inches. Do I need a 24 inch mat? Um, no, you don't. This is designed very interestingly, so I want to show you. So first, we're going to ungroup the whole thing. And you'll notice here on here, it says Halloween. It's a two-layer, so let's move these down and uh, so you can see. So basically, what I'm going to do is start peeling off these layers. So here is the happy and see this here has a cut right here. We're gonna keep those there because we start peeling off these little things. You see, this is peeled off and let's get to the background peel, <laughs> um, which is the black. And let me 
let me just move all this stuff here because I want you to see what I mean. So you can't really see it, but this is actually consists of, if you ungroup it, it consists of these pieces that are cut into um, like chunks, sizable chunks, right? And each one's like, I don't know, six or seven inches. So this started off as a single image and she cut them out and so that they all will appear on your mat and be able to be cut on a 12 by 12 inch mat. She also did like an overlap. So in looking at this, move it over. You see here, this piece, this is actually an overlap. No, here's one here. This is an overlap. You see where the, the mansion, the spire on the mansion and here, um, that's overlap. So that's so that your piece won't, um, get wobbly, but also to ensure that the piece won't be wobbly, I did use something called craft board because I wanted a really stiff sign. So um, if you aren't familiar with craft board, it's a lot like chipboard, but it comes in a couple of colors, black, white, and craft. And this is what it is. It's available from Cricut. It's a lot thicker. Um, if you feel comfortable with just using cardstock or you don't have craft board, you can go ahead and uh, cut it out with craft with cardstock. Or if you wanted to, you could cut out actually two of these in cardstock and then just layer them so that it creates the thickness of craft board. But I had the craft board, so I decided to use it. Um, this cuts out very simply. Let's have a look. And here it is on the mat. So there's all the white. And then here, see, these are our uh, pieces for the black. And it cuts out and it all goes on to um, seven, seven mats. Now, um, not seven, sorry, 11 mats. You can do some adjustments here like this pumpkin or at least the shadow lay of the pump pumpkin can go to this brown. And so you can re reduce the amount of paper you need here. You just need to make a few exceptions here. I also decided that I wanted my Halloween words to be in, um, in uh, glitter. So I started moving things like um, the bigger pieces that I wanted to do with the card craft board. I'm really having a hard time. Um, okay. And so the, how I did that was I just kind of moved it. I know I've shown you that a million times. Might have to do some, some messing around. I might have to move this one, but you know how to do this. We've done this like a gazillion times. So, um, let's see if that works. Move this around. Okay. Yeah, that's going to work. I think move this upside down. Well, you know, this is how you do it. Or you could just decide, uh, I'll just use the whole sheet of paper. But I like to preserve the paper that I have. So, um, so I do tend to do this a lot where I want to save my my paper. So you see what I'm doing is I'm moving around the pieces so that it will uh, fit all in one piece. It's a little harder to do when you have the bigger shapes, but here this L, um, I want to put it with my, with my um, one mat that has all these other L's and that way I only use one piece of glitter cardstock. The other thing you can do is if you um, if you want to cut these out separately, you can cut out certain sections of these separately. I do that with big projects. So in this case, like I might cut the just these out and um, and then none of these. So I would go here and I would um, first 
sort of deselect, if that's a word, or unselect these here, and so that I can just look at the um, things that I want to cut out in that special uh, craft board. And then I don't get confused. I only do that just to not confuse myself. And so um, sometimes I will do that and then come back and then cut the rest out in cardstock. You know, you do you. If, if that you find is, um, is a helpful hack, um, then do that. But, you know, this is just a suggestion. Sometimes I do do that because I want to see, oh, do I want to see what this looks like in glitter or do I want to see what this looks like in craft board? And then once we have that, I have all these pieces. My my design space updated this morning, so I don't know what's going on. But okay, so here, these end up being the ones we're going to do in craft board. This piece here actually is going to go over the top and it will, if you do it in the craft board, it will just be another layer and make it sort of thick. All right. So I'm not going to cut anything out for you today because I do want to put these things together and they will take a little bit of time. So let me bring you down and um, show you how they go together. First, let's do the countdown cubes. And again, I mentioned that I did start working on the Christmas ones, and then I started with another idea. So I'm going to not do the Christmas ones today um, because, well, we're far enough away from Christmas that I can play with that. Um, I can play with that project, you know. And let's see. Okay, so this is a pretty simple cutout. You have your box in the black, your box in the orange, and then these three pieces that end up being the uh, stand, okay? And then you have your sign, which I cut out a bunch of these, I don't know why. And this is just sort of a layered days until Halloween. And then here are all of the numbers. It's pretty simple. Let me show you how this goes together. First, let's do the boxes. So you'll see that there are all kinds of, um, all kinds of the score lines. We're going to score all around and make sure you hit all of those score lines. Make sure you use kind of a sturdy cardstock for this. Don't use a thin cardstock. Although these will cut out on um, eight and a half by eleven inch papers, which you could do. Just don't use paper because you need it to be a little bit sturdy. Um, and so, therefore, I'm going to do that. So let's fold both of these first. And before we go ahead and put it together, let's put the the numbers on. I always find that to be easier than um, to put it on after the cubes are created. All right. Okay, so obviously the orange ones are for the black cube and the black numbers are for the orange cube. And uh, the, since this is a square, it really does not make any difference how you put these on. You could put them on like going this way or any way that you want, but you're just going to adhere each number to one of the squares. But do make sure you follow the, you know, the code. Black with orange and, and then on the other side, it's orange with black. That's so that you can turn it around and use it like a perpetual calendar type of thing. And eight, seven, why do I have, oh, <laughs> down here, I forgot this one. I don't know, I'm not dealing with, uh... I don't know, I, I think I'm just tired or something. Hey, you know what, I woke up this morning, last night the dogs 
Lola and Benji had a fight and it was not good and I had to separate them. So this morning when I woke up, I could not find Benji and I was all over the place. Benji, Benji, where are you? And um, nothing, not even a whimper or anything like that. And uh, so I talked to Owen and I said, do you know, is Benji with you or you know, have you seen him? He said, no, no, he's there. I think he's there when I came home last night because he was out with the skills trainer. And, um, and so I'm like, where the heck did this dog go? I started thinking he got outside, whatever. So Owen came back. He was on a walk. And he, the first thing he did was look under my bed and there was Benji. <laughs> and I was like, oh, phew. You almost, you gave me a start there. And um, I, I don't know why I didn't look on my, under my bed, but I didn't. And I think I'm missing a number. I'm missing a number. Oh, is this it? Yes, here it is. So there's my four. And isn't there another one? Um, no, right? I don't know where my extra number is. Well, I'm I'm sure I'll find it, and you won't lose yours, right? So um, here we go. We're just putting the black numbers onto the orange color. Anyway, he was he was feeling, I guess, down about the the fight that they had, and so. He got a little extra attention. But the thing is, he fights, like, really hard. So, um, this is a five. Yep, that's a five, not a two. He does. He fights really, really hard. And um, he was hurting Lola. So... Okay, so while we're here, let's um, also score this piece as well. Now, this one here is going to go together differently because it's the base of the countdown or the calendar. Um, you see there's tabs all around and it's a little wider. It's not a, a, a square. And then you have these two pieces. So this goes together like this. You see, um, you take this piece that has the fold in it. All right. And we're going to glue this long tab. Right here. Just like that. Except... Make sure it's well on there. It's good on there. Might need a little extra glue. All right. So that's the base right here, you see? And make sure these are all folded, including all of these tabs. Okay. Did I do all the tabs? Not all the tabs. Let me make sure I do that. Now, you can accomplish this base in, uh, or th and these cubes using a couple of things. Sarah uses double stick tape, but personally, I use my glue because I don't have a problem with putting together um, with the glue. She mentioned that she didn't like to have to hold the pieces, but so you do, you know, what works for you, but we're going to start by um, folding in and here, just so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just folding in that first tab and putting some glue on there, okay? And you might you need to hold it for a few seconds. I don't know. Um, yep. I do know. You do need to hold it for a few seconds. So I would agree with her that double stick tape is also a very good option here. Um you if you have it use it i have it um but i just felt like you know i could do this on my own without the double stick tape so then we're going to put these tabs here glue these tabs here 
and put this down like this. Now, this could help if you have this on a flat surface like this and just get those tabs pressed down on the flat surface, if that helps you. If not, you could hold it like this, whatever works for you. I don't have enough glue on this, obviously. So this is the base. It's gonna hold our cubes. Okay. Or maybe you could use a combination of double stick tape and glue uh, because this part here, the last part where you're going to turn it into sort of a, a rectangle, um, you have to just make sure it dries, whereas double stick tape would immediately stick. All right, so glue. Glue, glue, glue. Listen to one of her videos. She has the cutest voice. And of course, I just love an English accent anyway. So here is the base. And we do have this piece that's extra. And it's going to serve as a, as a little background for our boxes so that our cubes, so that it, they don't go flying off. So let us choose what's going to be in the background this one and put that there so it's like a little sofa <laughs> it's like a little sofa while we're here, we can do this, which is our days until Halloween. It's just a layered thing, and you're going to go in and put some glue in all these little dots. Don't put a lot because you don't want it to come seeping out, as we've talked about before with glue. I do use my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue, but you can use whatever you want, including Art Glitter Glue if you like that. Just don't use a lot of it. Okay. Make sure you're putting it on correctly. Is this correctly? Yeah. That is like an offset layer there. All right, and then glue or double stick tape if you want the back of it and put it on the bottom. Don't put it here because it'll be covered by the, by the cubes. And then all that's left is we need to put our cubes together the same way we did our base. Just with the tabs, glue those tabs. And hold it or the double stick tape, don't hold it. Up to you. And we're kind of running out of time. Well, I'm keeping an eye on the clock anyway. So I probably won't, well, I don't know. I could probably do this both. I talk too much, man. <laughs> uh, okay. And like this. You know what, I think I might switch over to my art glitter glue. It comes out a little thicker, has a different nozzle. I 
here we are. So, um, for the folks watching that are on the chat, did you like this week? Do you like themed weeks or would you rather have a week that has just sort of a hodgepodge or do you like, like these themes that I've developed? Like, uh, I didn't develop Christmas in July, but you know, themed weeks or, would you rather it just be kind of a hodgepodge? So that's the first question. And the second question is, um, what's the second question? Oh, do you like that I am posting the topic the day before on Facebook? Is it enough time for you to plan on being here and, and stuff like that? Does it help you or do you like to cut out some stuff um, ahead of time so you can see and craft with me? Um, so that's the second question. And the third question is, would you be interested in a, we talked yesterday about this special program that they're having, like a make it forward day. And I was thinking going into the fall and stuff, maybe there might be um, like some times where we can actually do these differently on a Zoom or something where people could actually learn to craft on Zoom and be also on the video to take questions or to offer suggestions. Is that something you'd like to do? So three questions for you today to put into the comments or afterwards. If you're watching on YouTube, you can do it afterwards. Um, do you like these themed weeks? And do you like the pre, is it enough time you're getting the day before to find out what the, what the uh, project is? And do you think a Zoom craft along type of a thing would be useful? Because I need that feedback so that you guys can get the best experience. Okay, there we're done. Isn't that cute? And then you could start off October 1st on 31 and then you switch to 30, 29, etc., etc. Isn't that great? Um, and you can do that obviously with Christmas and uh with any other thing, if you do certain other holidays, like, uh, I don't know, New Year's or a special theme that you want to do, just by changing up the colors and changing uh, maybe the, the little saying that's in the front. Okay, so here is the oversized sign. So the first piece, as I mentioned, the, the bottom layer is done. I did it in craft board, but you don't have to. If you wanted to, you could make it thicker by doing a, a double layer. Um, and But if you're doing, either way you're doing it, you have to do these overlaps. So see here, um, it actually guides you along right here with the overlap. So right there is the overlap and then here, and that strengthens the back of your sign, okay? So we're going to turn this over and glue along the sides here. All right, and I'm just making sure that that's lined up. I put a little tiny bit too much glue there, but it actually won't show because we're gonna be piling on after that. So this one goes here. Here we go. 
You like my mermaid nails? I decided to go for the green. I I uh I said to the manicurist, I said, I want mermaid nails. <laughs> She said, oh, that's so much fun because I'm getting back to the swimming and I like to, because I usually swim breaststroke and I like to see my hands in the water and I felt like mermaid nails would be fun. Okay, so once you have this filled in, we're going to just kind of progressively go through these colors. The next up is the purple. The purple is also cut into pieces, but they just layer on. And you see this, is it this side? This side. Um, you see here it's layered and there's overlap here and overlap there. So you could do the overlap ahead of time if you wanted to, like this. like this and then overlap I'm sorry and then turn it over and then stick it to the back but I like the overlap because it does um, make it easy for joining rather than doing tabs I suppose um, and so we're gonna glue this this is really just a paper piecing project, but it's done in a very large style. Now, if you are ever wanting to do an oversized project on your own or design something, like I remember somebody wanted to do like an Alice in Wonderland themed party for their child. So they, um, they wanted to make like these cutouts to put on the lawn and they took the Alice in Wonderland images and they made them big, like, you know, a couple feet. I mean, not life size, but a couple feet tall. And that's a, that's a similar technique where you would make it the size you want and then you would cut it into um, pieces that would cut well and then you would assemble it works out really well. So let's go ahead and I'm trying to see what's next. Oh, I messed up. The orange needs to go underneath here, Rita. Ay, ay, ay. What are we gonna do with you, Rita? So thankfully my glue wasn't dry. You guys will do it better than me. You won't get glue everywhere like I just did and going to line this up correctly. There we go. And right, so you guys do this better than me. <laughs> Look at, I'm making a mess. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, and then comes the brown. Um, and I believe, did I not cut out? There's another piece here that, um, did I not cut it out? Weird. Um, and we just piece this all together, just like this. Uh, let's see, here we go. Okay. So this is where the A goes. Here's the H, H, A. There's the Y. And there's the two P's, P, P. And then here's like the one that goes on top that I did in glitter, H, A. P P Y. These other ones are for the Halloween word, so we'll just move those over and start gluing these little pieces on like this. The hand has actually nails that go on here, and I'm using this art glitter glue because this I cut out in a kind of glitter paper 
and I wanted it to stick. So here are the fingernails. Don't go crazy with the uh, glitter because you might have trouble with the layers, getting the lay. Like I was starting to think, ah, oh, I'll make this glitter, I'll make that glitter. And then I started thinking, nah, that's probably not a great idea because um, oftentimes there's problems when you're gluing onto glitter. Or you could just skip the glitter altogether and just use regular cardstock. All right, interesting, he only has four hands, okay? And then there's the coffin. I think there's a white piece that I didn't cut out or a black, no, it's a black piece that I didn't cut out. Really? Weird. Does it? That's not gonna really matter. Nobody's gonna really notice, but you, Cut out the black piece, of course, cut out the black piece. The working ahead is a hard thing to do, let me tell you, um, because it requires a lot of organization, clearly, that I do not have. <laughs> um, and here is our pumpkin. Okay, and just gluing all these little pieces together before we go ahead and put the Halloween part on it. And uh, all of this cardstock does lend itself to be um, thicker, makes your, makes your sign thicker, so if you're worried about that. I mean, it's thick enough you could put it on a door, I think, with the craft board. Or, you know, like maybe a interior door would work. But, I mean, this was a free file. Hello. So many cool free files out there. I mean, I, I do like to buy files, yeah. But, <laughs> I mean, I would have probably paid money for this. All right, and then, did I do this? I did not glue this one. Then you just have to deal with um, putting in all the letters on, on, but if you have to go, you know, I can sh just, I can finish and show the finished project afterwards. I'm gonna keep doing this because might as well, I'm halfway done. So here we go. There's for this fella, he has hands, like he needs hands, I don't know. But, and then we have a cute little bat that goes here. This guy has the hands here. I might be out of focus, but I don't know if that's actually correct here. Okay, let's do this. And let's put the pumpkin on and then do that hand. You're welcome. So I'm going to stick it out. But if you have to leave, I totally get it. I know April has to go on to work. Right, April? All right. So there are all the major pieces. So before, you know, before I finish up the letters and stuff, I just want to show you how nice and thick this is. See how thick? Super thick. 
So I really like using that craft board, but if you don't have it, you could also use chipboard um, that you put that you put underneath. Chipboard works too. And if you don't have chipboard, if you eat breakfast cereal, um, you could use the the breakfast cereal boxes for chipboard. They work great for chipboard. So you know you don't have any hanging around. I actually t take all the chipboard that comes in like paper packages when I buy paper. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you one thing before before the end of of the day, the end of the class today. So there's our H and you see there are little spots here to show you or to guide you where they go. Like that's where the A goes. H A P is the Y. Where's the other P? Here's the P. It's like doing a puzzle. H A P P Y. And this technique, so if you wanted to do a happy birthday, which we could try doing that as well. We could use the same technique we can find. I was thinking, you know who's, uh, whose images you could really use this for is Miss Kate's Cuttables, which are, they're free at, um, in Design Space. So we could maybe um, design our own. So, oh, it keeps moving. Um, we can maybe design our own. So then the last part is uh, hooking up all of these letters to their offset layer or their shadow layer. So, and it spells out Halloween. So there's the L, there's the A. This I think is the H, is an E. So here is our, I cut this out in glitter. Yeah, the E goes this way. And they just simply, there's O. Halloween, is that the O? Maybe not. They simply go on top of our sign. W, E, H. It is like doing a puzzle kind of like it. I like to do crossword puzzles, all kinds of puzzles actually. Here's the L. J L. Isn't it Halloween? Yes, there's the other L. Hal O Is this the correct hello? Hello. W, no, this is O. And N. Just like that. And then we would space them out equally across the sign. You could also use pop dots here if you wanted to. But that is the completed sign. I'm going to keep working, but, um, but I know we've kind of gone past the hour. Um, oh, really? And, um, so Annette's saying that under materials, there is a cereal box setting. Um, so I guess I'm not the only one that knows that cereal boxes um, make great chipboard. And they really are, I mean, they don't look nice, but they make a great back layer to them. So... Um, so that is sort of the project for today or the two projects for today, including our craft, um, including our days until Halloween, not 48, although I suppose it could do that, but you can, um, our perpetual calendar that's used for a countdown for days until Halloween, and then our happy Halloween sign that is sturdy enough 
for any place you put it. It's not going to get all floppy in there by using a craft board. So do check out um, Craft with Sarah. Again, she has a lot of free files, including some Christmas ones that we can do. And also um, she has uh, uh, paid files too. So, you know, go through. I know this is a freebie week, but anyway. So that's the end of Freebie Week. Next week, we start off with Infusible Ink and Sublimation on soft materials. We'll be doing five, six projects, I think. Next Saturday, I may not be able to make date night because I have a wedding to go to. I'm going to check and see what time that is so that we can figure out if it's going to work. Okay. All right, everyone. Oh, you, you want me to finish? I can finish. I'm going to just sit here and finish, but I just don't want to hold people if they have to go off and start their day. Uh, let's see for the rest of the day. What am I doing? I think I'm going to go swimming again. Although I got to tell you, I am so sore still from two days ago and only swimming a half hour of laps. And where it hurts the most is my torso, you know, because when you think about it, swimming like really exercises all of those muscles versus like if you were to do aerobics or walking you know it'd be your legs and swimming does your hand your arms and your um and your legs but your torso because you're can you know when you're doing that not freestyle or you know the crawl but but um I tend to do uh, breaststroke, backstroke, and I've been known to do some butterfly. So that uses your entire body. And boy, my body is screaming at me saying, what are you doing to us, Rita? <laughs> you've been, you've been, uh, you've been giving us a break, but it's real important and it helps you to think, I think. That's my feeling. I always have some great thoughts when I'm in the pool. Um, although I would love to have music playing. They don't have music playing. They used to. Oh, COVID seems to have canceled a lot of a lot of fun things like music playing in the pool. So anyway, uh, you're oh they told you you should go swimming. Do you have a local pool? I am not getting married. Who's the, who's saying that I'm getting married? Who is who is uh, spreading that rumor? No, 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 no. Never getting married ever again. Marriage just does not work out for me. Although it'd be nice to have a a companion that you know to grow old with, but does not work out for me so I'm perfectly happy being with just my, all my animals and my son you know I just would prefer that um I will tell you that there's big sale I know I've mentioned it before but definitely um check out the sale because some cardstock is making a comeback um, especially like the samplers is like a red, green, brown, like a orange, yellow, making a comeback. So I thought that was cool. The individual colors are slowly coming back. We had had a meeting with the people that do that stuff. Like the product experts had a meeting with them and we were like, you need to bring cardstock back like right away. Um, and just the basic cardstock, you know, not the fancy stuff. People just want to be able to craft. We spend a lot of time telling people, um, that the, mm, too much, uh, that the cardstock that they make is really wonderful. And it is, but how can you keep it, you know, touting, it if it's never in stock 
So I was pretty psyched about that. In fact, the winners of this last month, um, they did go out, by the way. <laughs> the winners of the last month got cardstock for the, the $50 winners. Uh, obviously not the joy winner. The joy winner is going to get the joy and a bunch of joy things, Rhonda Blower. But the other folks, which is like, I think it was... Wendy, um, and Christine, and a few other people, Kathy Crowley, there, you're going to be getting cardstock, which I was like, yay, it's back in stock, so I'm almost done here, folks, This part is glitter. I might need to go back and put a little extra glue on there. So this is gonna look cute. And now I have two because I can put one on my front door and one on my back door. How does that sound? Hey, Halloween. Perfect. Yay! Well, not perfect. Um, you could, uh, sure, embellish this. I'm not gonna. I think it's pretty embellished itself. But there it is. Happy. Let me get up a little bit. Um, yeah, there you go. Happy Halloween. Yeah, so check out that sale going on because it's pretty cool. And things are starting to get back in stock. And um, don't forget, if you use my code, use my link, um, and you will get 10% off and free shipping. But your order needs to be pre-discount. Your order needs to hit $50 to get that discount. And also, the discount doesn't work on the machines. So, what do you say? Pretty good, right? All right. That is going to do it for me today. Um, I just love these little projects. I love even more that they are free because who doesn't like free? That's a, that's a seven. Who doesn't like free, right? Um, so much fun. And definitely check out Sarah's site. And let's see. We'll see you again hopefully tomorrow night for our Zoom call, and then we'll be back on Monday with a whole nother set of great projects to do with your Cricut. Um, I'm going to also be using my Joy next week, so if you missed any of my Joy stuff, you'll, um, you'll get to see that, okay? Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day. What's my code? My code is CricutChat10. And that will be the code until the end of the year. They they were having a change every quarter, but now they decided to do half year. Um, so it's Cricut Chat 10. And you do use the, the link. I'll put the link in the description of the video. If you're watching this on YouTube, definitely check the description. Always has the link. And I'll also put the link to Craft with Sarah, but it's just craftwithsarah.com. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Tanya.